what is up you guys in today's terrarium i'm pretty much going to be trying to replicate a mountain range surrounded by forests backing onto a small beach so for this terrarium i've got three different colored sand because i'm also going to implement a different sort of a decor regarding the soil section of this terrarium just so it's more aesthetically pleasing I've also got some dragonstone, that's going to be the type of rock I'm using to replicate my mountains. And I've got some damp coconut fibre. And of course some gravel as my drainage layer. And some flat screen to separate my drainage from my soil. I've also got a little air plant, I might use it, I might not, we'll see what happens. And the main plan of choice for this terrarium is Calicio Retasso. This is also a great terrarium plant as it stays relatively small. And of course, the moss. You can't have this terrarium without moss. That's going to be the main focus of this terrarium as most of these terrariums are going to have moss as their main feature. So firstly, we'll add our gravel. That's going to basically be our drainage because the last thing you want is your terrarium to get really soggy wet soil if you accidentally over water. It can get really fungusy, you can rot your plants and your moss. So I recommend about an inch or so of gravel does quite well for a drainage layer. Next we want to add our sheet of fly screen that you will have cut to the same diameter as the terrarium. So this is basically going to stop your other substrates falling into your drainage layer. I'm going to add a thin layer of damp cocoa fiber on top of the fly screen. This is pretty much to stop the sand falling through because the sand is quite fine. It'll just go straight through the fly screen into your gravel and the whole kind of pattern I'm trying to do with the sand will be completely ruined. So you want to just add a thin layer of cocoa fiber, pat it down nice and lightly, but firmly as well. This will help to stop the sand falling through. See what I'm doing different in this terrarium as opposed to uh, most terrariums, like the one I did literally just right before this one, is I'm going to do layers of sand around the rim of the terrarium. And this is going to create a sort of a pattern with the sand which just makes it a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Because honestly one thing about a lot of these terrariums that is always something that annoys me a bit is the soil layer of the terrarium takes up a good portion of the container sometimes up to half and usually that consists of just soil and a drainage layer so it's not very attractive to look at when it's just soil and it's taking up half of the space or a third of the space in your container so what I want to do is create a bit of a I don't know I guess you'd call it sand art I don't know but pretty much what I'm doing is I put the first layer of sand in but with the second layer I'm only going around the edges and I'm going to leave the center open. So I'm basically I'm making like a well with this um, second layer of sand I'm putting in here. So you do want to go quite slowly because the sand is quite fine and if you go too fast it's very easy to over pour and you don't want to be scooping it back out because you don't want to accidentally um, go in there with a spoon scooping and disturb the layer of sand and mix your two colors together because that will just ruin the whole kind of effect you're going for. And I swear paintbrushes are the absolute greatest tool for this sort of thing when it comes to leveling your sand, evening it out. Uh, so just use your paintbrush to gently um, manipulate the sand to get the desired thickness around the edge. And like I said, I left the well in the center. I'm going to put some coconut fiber in that well because you do need coconut fiber as the main source of substrate. 
because that's what's going to retain the moisture that will allow your moss and plants to stay alive and grow and create the humidity in the terrarium from evaporation. The sand is purely aesthetic. So again, you want to just lightly press that coconut fiber down. Uh, you don't want to compact it too hard um, because then water won't flow through it very well and you, you kind of want to allow some room for oxygen gaps in the substrate as well as places where water can be held. If you pack it down too tightly, you're potentially going to rot your plants. So now I'm going for the third layer of sand. Again, just going carefully around the edges, creating a bit of a well again around the patch of coconut fiber I've just put in. Once you're happy with the way it looks, it's time to add your rock. Now this first piece of rock you want to put in pretty carefully because again, it's kind of touching the edges of the cylinder where my little sand art is and you don't want to disturb that and mix the two colors together. So when it comes to pressing that rock down, you want to do it very slowly and you want to be 100% sure it's in the spot you want it to be before you start pressing it down. Because if you twist the rock, you're going to mix your sand up and it's going to ruin the whole effect. So once you're happy with where it is, uh, just put some coconut fiber around it and lightly pack it in place with the coconut fiber. This will help keep it in position a bit better. So what I'm doing here, I'm now just digging a little hole for the second piece of Dragonstone. Um, yeah, I'm semi-winging it here. I mean, it is probably better to pre-plan exactly how you want your rocks to sit before you do this because, like I said, the more messing around you do, the more likely you're going to ruin your sand feature around the edge. And as for the third rock, it's quite a, a skinny uh, rock, so I can kind of just stab it straight into the substrate without too many issues at all there. And again, just pack it in with coconut fiber as you go to help hold it in position. So lastly, we want to finish off by putting the last bit of coconut fiber across the last front section of sand, fully covering it up. This very front section of the terrarium is going to eventually be the beach, where the mount, which is basically, um, yeah, I'm pretty much trying to replicate a little beach with mountain ranges and forests behind it. So that very front section of coconut fiber, you want it to be relatively thin and you also want to pack it down a bit more evenly and as flat and compact as you can because that's going to be a beach where I'm going to put some white sand. And you want it to be nice and even for that. You also don't want that white sand to seep through the coconut fiber into your other layer of sand. So you want to pack it down quite well because I've found if you don't pack down coconut fiber hard enough, sand can kind of start to sink into it and it just doesn't look that good. So next you just uh, put your plants in. So I'm just digging little holes and planting my plants. These plants don't get huge. They keep that small size with their small size leaves. They will get eventually too tall for the terrarium still, but you can prune them back and they'll just regrow from where you've cut them. So not a big deal. And of course I'm adding my moss. I've got a few different types of moss. Um, I actually don't know what sort of moss they are because they're mosses I've just collected from outside. But I do know that the one I'm putting in right here at the front stays very short and compact. So I'm putting that type of moss at the front of the terrarium where I've got various other types of mosses that do get a little bit taller. They get about an inch tall eventually. So they're gonna go more towards the back of the terrarium. 
replicating forest behind the mountains. One lovely thing about the moss too is you can just cut it to the exact size you want with a pair of scissors and slot it in exactly where you want it to go. So it's a very satisfying thing to put in your terrarium. It just fits like a jigsaw puzzle when you cut it right. So also with the moss, you do want to make sure that if you're using moss that you've taken from outside to only water it with either rainwater or distilled water. You can buy distilled water from the grocery store. If you have an RODI water filter in your laundry or kitchen, you can use that or ideally use rainwater. Uh, don't use tap water because moss cannot handle chlorine and moss can also not handle minerals, which tap water has. Tap water has a very low level of total dissolved solids, different minerals plus chlorine and these things moss just can't handle, it just dies. So you need to use pure distilled or RODI water or rainwater. This is because the way moss grows in the wild, it just um, grows on rocks and logs mainly. It's collecting rainwater and water evaporates and condensates on the moss as well when it's a humid day. And that's the only water it gets. And that water is completely free of all minerals. And that's pretty much what it's used to and it can't handle any other type of water. So when you do mist your terrarium, just make sure you do that and get the right type of water. So and next I'm adding my white sand. And as you can see, it's, yeah, I over poured a bit. It fell out of the container a bit quicker than I wanted. Um, but yeah, so you wanna just carefully add your white sand to the front of the terrarium. Now, this is just my design. You don't have to do this. So if you don't wanna make the little beach section at the front, then just ignore what I'm doing here. But yeah, I kind of feel like it just makes the terrarium pop a bit with that sudden color. Now for the maintenance on this terrarium and the upkeep, literally just give it a spray down with some water, a light spray, pop the lid on, put it somewhere where it gets either bright indirect light, not direct sunlight though, or you can put an LED light on it if you want it to look a little bit brighter and more decorative. Other than that, you might have to just mist it every one to two months when the evaporation and condensation doesn't happen as much on the glass. So also regarding, um, again, the moss and, and what water you can and can't have with it, this is partly also why I'm using coconut fiber as opposed to just any old potty mix, because if any old generic potty mix they're kind of a bit high in nutrients and sometimes they have magnesium and epsom salts and sodium mixed in them depending what one you get which will of course upset your moss and it won't do well at all so coconut fiber is great for moss because it's completely nutrient and mineral free for the most part so now i'm just adding my last little touches to my beach just a few broken off bits of dragonstone, um, just kind of break up the intense uh, brightness of that really, really white sand. So it's not too hard on the eyes. And that's it, pretty much done and dusted. Um, this whole terrarium took me roughly about an hour or so to make. Um, it's a little bit tedious and fiddly, but it's a lot of fun. And it's not that expensive to make because you can go out and collect your own moss. You don't necessarily have to buy dragonstone. You can use any old rocks you want. Dragonstone just kind of replicates mountains quite well because of its honeycomb sort of structure and shape. And it's it just really, looks really good as a mountain replicating sort of rock. Uh, but you can use any rock you want. And the glass jar itself, well, it's not really a jar, it's more like a, a cylinder, I guess. It cost me like $15, so these are really cheap to make. Anyways, guys, well, that's it for me. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, hit the notification bell, and Instagram's down below, follow me there as well. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.